presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Arby's. It's the Big 12 opener for Texas and Texas Tech from Austin, with the Red Raiders in search of their first 4-0 start in eight years, and the Longhorns already with a loss at Arkansas, trying to avoid a 2-2 start in Steve Sarkeesian's first year as Texas head coach. Hi everybody, Dave Pash alongside Dusty Dvorak. We'll check in with Tom Luganville in a minute. Obviously, Texas has an elite list of running backs over the course of its history. The two Heisman Trophy winners, Earl Campbell and Ricky Williams. We're not putting B. John Robinson in that category just yet, but for Texas to win today and to have a great year, Robinson has to reach his potential, which is off the chart. He's got to be a huge piece of this offense, and he's one of the most talented running backs in all of college football. He's already put it on display this year. His jump cutting ability, the lateral quickness off the charts can make defenders miss in a phone booth. Then you talk about the burst and acceleration through the hole, second to none, could get the to top speed so quickly and really have those explosive plays. And this is where we'll see him today continue to grow as a receiver, great route runner, excellent hands, and a guy who's really a five-tool type of player. But Tom, as you know very well, this Texas Tech front gonna pose a lot of problems for this Longhorn rushing attack. Well, there's no question, Dusty, this Texas Tech Red Raider group on defense, led by Colin Schooler, is a handful. They are all about disruption in chaos and the offensive line for Texas has struggled in the early going so if you're going to get B. John Robinson going early the Texas offensive line has to play well early but I think people are going to be surprised by this Texas Tech defensive front they are awfully fun to watch. Luke's Texas beginning its quest for its first conference championship since 2009 kickoff is after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I kind of stumbled through that a little bit. Was a little... On ESPN, the Texas Longhorns trying to get to three and one. It would be the best start for a new head coach since the late 70s if Steve Sarkeesian can pull it off. In his eighth year overall as a head coach, having spent time at both Washington and USC, won the Broyles Award last year as the top assistant coach in college football under Nick Saban at Alabama. And if you can see there through the smoke, yeah, that is Matt Wells, as far as we know, in his third year as the Texas Tech head coach. Four wins in both years one and two, and if he wins today, he'll match that victory total before October. The smoke from, from some of the pregame festivities uh, before we get underway here in Austin on what's expected to be a 90 degree day. Texas Tech won the toss and deferred, so Texas will be on offense first at the 25 yard line with Casey Thompson making his second career start. The first was last week against Rice. His dad, Charles, brother Kendall, both played quarterback at the D1 level. And he's been a backup to Sam Ellinger. The last couple of years, Ellinger, sixth round pick of Indianapolis. Last week, we mentioned he started. That was the first time since high school, November of 2017. He's been very good in relief over the course of his career. Had four touchdowns in the Alamo Bowl last year. Starts in the Shotgun with Bijan Robinson next to him. And it's play action and a throw out to the flat. Joshua Moore with a gain of about two or three before he's brought down by Demarcus Fields. Expect to see a lot of perimeter plays. As Tom talked about in the open, this Texas Tech defense really good with their front six or seven attacking, aggressive. And we see early Sark trying to attack the edges of this defense. Delayed handoff, Robinson trying to find running room. And pinballs forward for about four yards. Texas Tech is in the top ten in rush defense. Tyree Wilson, they got a ton of transfers on this team. He's one of them from Texas A&M. It's a big reason why this defense looks a lot different in 2021. Their experience, their mature, and a new scheme from defensive coordinator Keith Patterson has brought some juice and some energy to this Red Raider defense. Third and four. And Thompson to the air. And the pass is caught for a first down. 
true freshman Xavier Worthy with the grab out to the 41. Yeah, young man whose name you'll be hearing called a lot today and throughout the course of his career. Got dynamic speed, excellent hands, and already Sark is putting a lot on him. He's picked up this offense so well. He's going to have a chance to be a playmaker and Colin Schooler all over the field for this Red Raider defense. They go back to the ground, Robinson. His ankle tackled by Krishan Merriweather after a short gain of two. Robinson out of Tucson, sophomore, averaging close to 100 rushing yards per game coming into today. Real key for today is offensive line for the Texas Longhorns. Can they get the push against this Texas Tech front? Can they ID where the pressure and the post snap movement is coming from? Thompson will throw it here on second and eight. Hitches looking downfield, firing complete for a second, then the ball came out. And hits the ground. Whittington couldn't hang on. There have been some drops this year by Texas receivers. He should have had that one. And Jordan Whittington, too good of a player. Former running back, now wide receiver. One of the playmakers they have. I like how Thompson worked to his right, back to his left, and a pass that should have been caught by Jordan Whittington. So it puts him in third and eight. Puts more pressure on Thompson to make something happen. Been very productive as the quarterback for Texas. One of the reasons why they've gone with him, they find a way to score when he's on the field. Got to pick up third and eight. Four man rush. Throw is caught for a first down in Texas Tech territory. That time Whittington held on as Thompson went back to him. What's well, outstanding protection up front. Double studs from the defensive line of Texas Tech. Whittington finds a hole in the zone. A nice throw on third down by Thompson. There's Robinson sprinting out. Flag down. Robinson lowers the shoulder. Inside the 40 down to the 38. Good run, but likely coming back. Kevin Hassel, a referee. Holding. Offense, number 78. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Left guard Denzel Okafor. We kick off another great day of college football. Final college football Saturday of 2021. How about Michigan? That's up next here on ABC against unbeaten Rutgers. Got to be one of the early surprises of 2021, right, Dave? Jim Harbaugh, young defensive staff, and man, they responded. Yeah. Question is, are they for real? Can they? We've seen this before. Good starts under Jim Harbaugh. Can they keep it up? First down and 20 after the hole. Thompson looking downfield, taking a shot. Oh, the receiver tripped, and the pass is incomplete. Marcus Washington lost his footing. Otherwise, he probably scores. A missed opportunity as Washington gets behind the defense. Trips a little bit over his own feet when he clears Pearson. Oh, just over the outstretched arms of his intended target. I like the way Casey Thompson starting this football game. Locating open targets, you see him evade the rush, step up, step into that throw. So a missed opportunity there. That was going to be six. Second and 20. Play fake. Thompson keeping his eyes downfield again and throws a strike. Whittington. To the 40. They get 15 on that second down and 20 play. Tell you, Dusty, this pass protection so far from a much maligned Texas offensive line has been fantastic. We have seen Casey Thompson sit back there with poise, just work through his target progression, and this isn't the Texas offensive line we've seen the last couple of weeks. Oh, they had been struggling moving the ball so far in this drive. Robinson on third down and five and gets knocked down at the 39. You wonder if Sark called that because they're in four down territory. Feels like it here at home. The kickoff Big 12 play. I think he's going to put some trust in his offense and looks like the go zone right here inside the 40. But it's fourth and four. We'll see if. You know, Robinson is a very good receiver. Would be in the picture from that standpoint rather than getting a handoff on fourth and four. And that's where they're throwing the ball. And Robinson's got a first down. And what a move. He's gone. Bijan Robinson into the end zone for the touchdown. Getting Bijan Robinson the football on the perimeter. 
is going to be tough for Texas to handle. Easy swing pass, sent Whittington in motion, took the coverage with him. No one identified B. John Robinson, a mistake by Keith Patterson's defense. And you see the elusiveness on the sidelines. Big statement opening drive for the Longhorns. They told us he's the best receiver in terms of hands on the Texas team as a penalty marker is down. Robinson now with seven touchdowns. He had six all of last year. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 players at the snap. That penalty is declined. The extra point is good. So a great start for Texas at home converting on fourth down and four and it's a 39 yard touchdown run by B. John Robinson making defenders miss after the catch and taking it home. Absolutely. Watch. We're going to have him just swing out here. Now, the motion tells you it's man, okay? And then we have a linebacker that's going to blitz, and nobody's going to be able to stay with B. John Robinson out of the backfield in the flat. You see, whoop, hits the brakes. Pearson flies right by, and he strolls into the end zone. A little bit of everything that we've been talking about on display there on that big fourth down touchdown catch. Cameron Dicker kick it off to Jadarius Townsend. Touchback and Texas Tech will start on the 25 with quarterback Tyler Shuck, who is from Chandler, Arizona, threw for almost 400 yards last week. He's in the ESPN 300 when he was coming out back in 2018, was a starter in every game last year, including the Fiesta Bowl, but they kept taking him out and putting in Anthony Brown, basically begging him to transfer, which he did in February to Lubbock. And he's off to a good start this season, leading the Big 12 in passing. Spent two years as the backup to Justin Herbert before getting his opportunity with the Ducks last year. Some movement might be a free play. Penalty on Texas. Pass a little behind the target, but boy, Ezukama is just a great all around receiver. Got the first down, so they'll likely just decline this gain of 10. Offside. Defense number 98 in the neutral zone at the snap. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is first down. And let's go to the studio and say hello to Kevin Agandi. All right, Kevin, run play on. First down as Xavier White gets the carry. Taj Brooks, their leading rusher, is out this week due to injury, so White will get a lot of work, as will Sir Roderick Thompson, who would miss the first couple games due to injury, but he was their leading rusher each of the last two years. Yeah, Taj Brooks had such a good start to the season. Big loss not having him available. White's been good so far, and it's great to have a healthy Sir Roderick Thompson back. Played a lot of good football for the Red Raiders over the last couple years. Shuck will throw it here in second and five. And the pass is caught. Ezukama again. Boy, this time it's him being physical, putting his head down. Overshone, overran the play. Well, he's so physically imposing. It's six foot three, 220 pounds, a strong runner with the football after the catch. One of the best wide receivers in the Big 12. They target him early and often. And clearly, Pete Kwiatkowski, defensive coordinator of Texas, told us yesterday, we've got to identify him. We've got to know where he is at all times. They're going to run it here with White straight ahead, and he picks up three. Back to your point on Ezukama, you look at big plays. He got six catches already for 30 or more yards. That leads the country. So to your point, maybe the best receiver in the Big 12 and also one of the best receivers in all of college football. No question. And they love to throw him screens on the perimeter because for DBs, he is a tough guy to tackle. He's going to have a lot of targets here in this ballgame for Sonny Cumbie. Shock on second and seven, and they run it. Nowhere to go. A loss on the play. And it was big Moro Ojimo in there to take down White for a loss. Moro Ojimo 
really been a consistent force on the interior of this Texas defensive line. Added some weight, moved down from defensive end, and is really playing some of his best football of his career. Long arms. He gets separation from those def offensive linemen. Chuck in trouble, throws it into the dirt. Ojimo had pressure, nobody touched him. And so it's fourth down. Try to set up the screen, but not enough time for Tyler Shuck. Ojimo unaccounted for off the edge. Shuck uncomfortable, unable to get the ball to an open Sir Roderick Thompson. Big stand and a big stop for the Texas defense on their initial timeout. They do have one of the best punters in the country in Austin McNamara. Certainly in terms of the strongest legs. But here you need finesse. Got to try to pin Texas inside the 10. Deshaun Jamison is the return man as the Longhorns almost got that one. And McNamara absolutely smoked that ball. Not what they were looking for there. A touchback, so a net of only 25 yards. Great start for Texas. The Longhorns up 7-0 here in Austin. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the means. Julius Whittier, the first Longhorn African American letterman, played in the early 70s. First as a lineman, then switched to tight end. Passed away in September of 2018. Native of San Antonio. Recently, Earl Campbell, Ricky Williams getting statues. The field is named after the two Heisman Trophy winners, Campbell Williams Field. Texas leading 7 0. Impressive opening drive for Casey Thompson. Five of seven passing. Four different receivers caught a ball, including the back Robinson for a touchdown. Stepping up is Thompson. And then dumping it off. Robinson out in space. Boy, is he terrific! What an electric play there as he broke down the defender and then ran right around him, turned on the Jets. Well, it really goes back to the poise of Casey Thompson. Starts to his right, looks, surveys the entire field, then locates his check down, and good luck tackling five in open space. They go right back to him here this time on the ground. It's not just that he's elusive, he's powerful yep. as he gets about five yards on that play to bring up second down and five. You know, Dusty, it, it's, it's all about Steve Sarkeesian, too, in terms of creating matchups, getting your best players in space, isolated on defenders one on one. You're not going to be able to match up with number five. And then Casey Thompson's ability to work through his progressions quickly, he has been unbelievably impressive at this point. Just a second career start at quarterback. Robinson again they try the edges running room then Robinson gets popped at the 45 yard line by Taylor Demerson. He comes up short it'll be third and one. Well this is a good early sign for the Texas offensive line. You know under Steve Sarkeesian they love that stretch play. They're getting good movement getting to the second level. Boy quarterback sneak. And Texas Tech either wasn't ready for that or wasn't expecting it. And Thompson got about four yards. Well, this offensive line had their struggles against Arkansas. Essentially, they had their way. And you have to think offensive, co-offensive coordinator, offensive line coach Kyle Flood, he challenged these guys. They look good against Rice, and they've looked the best they have all year here early in this football game. Great start for the big guys of the Longhorns. Just again, couldn't tell Texas Tech wasn't ready for the snap, wasn't ready for that particular play call. Thompson off play action. Again, an open receiver, and the pass is caught near the 30 by Marcus Washington as Casey Thompson carving him up right now, 18 yards. But the pocket is just there. I mean, it's a four-man rush. Nobody getting in the vision of Casey Thompson all day to deliver, and he is on point. They run it. And Johnson trying to get the first down. Roshan Johnson, former quarterback, nine yard pickup for him. That's his 13th carry on the year, and he averages about 11 yards per rush. Team leader. This guy will do whatever it takes to help this team win football games. Former quarterback back in 19, they were devoid of bodies in the running back room. He's been back there, and a guy who's willing to just do whatever it takes for the betterment of the team. Another 
run. This time it's Thompson, and he's dragged down at the five. Colin Schooler saves a touchdown, but man, we talked a lot about Texas Tech's defense being much improved. They don't look like it on this first quarter. Watch two. Watch Roshan Johnson. He's going to get out in front and essentially be the lead blocker for Casey Thompson. We praised him for his poise in the pocket. Also, very fleet of foot. And he shows you as he gets to the edge just how dangerous he can be as a runner. But I love Roshan Johnson off the ball. Key block to help spring that quality run from Thompson. So first and goal from the five. Thompson's going to hand it off to Johnson, stacked up at the two-yard line. Devin Drew leading the way. Texas struggled offensively at Arkansas, lost 40 to 21, came back and blew out Rice. Made the change, going from Hudson Card to Casey Thompson. Second and goal here. Johnson again bounces off of a tackler and into the end zone for the Texas touchdown. What a start for this Texas offense. Casey Thompson has looked outstanding. We've seen the superstar B. John Robinson, but really it's been about this offensive line getting push, allowing time, and they're the leader of this offense, Roshan Johnson, lowering the shoulder and getting to the end zone. Exactly how Sark would have scripted it. Cameron Dicker makes it 14 to nothing. Texas. Losing a couple teams to the SEC, that doesn't work in real life, that claw thing, no. but it does on our graphic. <laughs> Texas and Oklahoma bound for the SEC at the latest in 2025. Replaced with Cincinnati, Houston, BYU, and UCF. Longhorns and Sooners. Bound for the Southeastern Conference. Oklahoma's got a big one tonight against West Virginia at ABC. This will be a touchback and come out to the 25 for Texas Tech. Schools accepted the invitations at the end of July, and we talked about at the earliest, well, they could go before 20, at the latest 2025. They've been with the Big 12 since its inception in 1996. You know, obviously, they could potentially stay through 2024. Kind of feels like with BYU joining in 2023, potentially those other schools from the American coming in early. Kind of be surprised if we saw Texas and Oklahoma stay for the duration of that contract. But Big 12 is going to look different. And Oklahoma, Texas is going to be fun to watch them in the SEC. Tyler Shuck. And it's going to end up as a run play to Pierce thrown behind the line up ended at the 31. Dusty is somebody who obviously played in the Oklahoma Texas rivalry. You reminded me you were three and one in the Red River shootout uh, in your career. How successful do you think both programs will be in the SEC. Look I think that we're talking about two of the dominant programs in all of college football. I think with Sark getting here going to get the personnel he needs. I think that they're going to be able to compete very quickly and I think for Oklahoma they're going to be able to compete essentially right away but obviously it's week in week out stiffer competition uh, but I think Oklahoma and Texas once they get settled it's not going to take long for them to have an impact in the SEC as a the big gain out to the 49 of Texas Tech Boy, the Red Raiders need a response here's Geiger made the first man miss a flag down thrown right at Travis Koontz the tight end so this will likely come back. We need a blocking in the back there on the perimeter. Some discussion as to whether there was a block in the back by Koontz. There is no foul on the play the action was deemed to be legal. Second down. This season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. 
Great game between Texas and Texas Tech last year. Went to overtime with Texas overcoming a 15 point lead with three minutes to go and won 63 to 56. Oh, we have a shootout here. Thompson off the right side and nothing doing. Gonna bring up third down. See DeMarvian overshone Luke Brockermeyer right where they need to be. The athleticism and speed of overshone on display. Now he's a safety still learning linebacker. Takes some false steps, gets caught up on blockers at times. When he can just run east and west, a really explosive athlete making a nice play on second down. I know it's early, but you got the feeling this is big right here for Texas Tech. Got to keep that hot Texas offense on the sideline. They run it on third down and six, and they lose yardage. Thompson is dragged down. The first guy there was Alfred Collins. They were running that as if they were going to go on fourth down, but because of the loss, they got a punt. I got a punt. There's no question. Fourth and seven at midfield. You can't give this offense that you struggled to stop so far the football back. Alfred Collins, 95, making that play. I think he's the most talented defensive lineman Texas has. He hasn't been in the mix as much so far this season. I asked Pete Kwiatkowski about that yesterday. He said he's starting to practice better. He's starting to come on. You saw the explosiveness with the tackle for loss on third down. So fourth and seven, McNamara just booted the last one into the end zone. A flag is down, and the punt is blocked. And it's picked up by the Longhorns, and they're going to take it in for a touchdown. Keelan Robinson blocked it. Morris Blackwell recovered it for a score. I think he might have got too quick of a jump there. Lined up in the neutral zone potentially. Offside. So now Texas Tech can go for it as you watch Robinson offside. You see head over the football. Man, he's like shot out of a cannon. Had a block punt a week ago against Rice. Explosive plays as a running back. The Alabama transfer has some crazy speed. Just got to get lined up properly. That would have been just a massive play. The Texas special teams. The offense back on the field for the Red Raiders going for it on fourth down and two, seeing if they can make Texas pay after that mistake. Tyler Shuck, you'd have to think he'd be looking for Eric Ezekama, 13. Shuck with a little half roll and a dump off to Tharpa first down. The big guy, six foot nine. 250 pound true freshman tight end for the first down. Well, it's an outstanding decision. And you mentioned Tharp and his size. Just boot action, bring the H back back across. Gives the quarterback a pass or run option. Tharp open in the flat. Good execution from Tyler Shuck. Rest set of downs inside the 40. Thompson gets the carry straight ahead. Gain of three. Tavondre Sweat with the stop. Really just goes to show how much Sonny Cumbie and his offense has evolved. He was a quarterback back for Mike Leach when it was true air raid. You're going to see tight ends. You're going to see RPOs a and, a, and a, the willingness to want to run the football. And there's still some air raid principles, but completely different. And this air raid has really grown and changed over the years. Another run play and a huge lane for Thompson inside the 25 inside the 20 and all the way to the 15. What a momentum shift. It goes from 21 nothing with a block punt return for a touchdown to maybe 14 seven. No question key block by Josh Berger the puller kicked out on the outside defensive end Ray Thornton an outstanding vision in the open field by Sir Roger Thompson 17 yard gain to the 16 yard line of Texas. Texas Tech 3 and 0 for the first time since 2017. Shot to throw. Fires inside the 10 and the catch is made. 
at the eight yard line by Henry Teeter a tight end that's not used very often and he gets eight yards and Texas Tech going up tempo more of a blocker than a pass catcher but good concentration bringing that ball in. I got to run Thompson here and he does not get the first down. Brought down a yard short of the line to gain third down and one as Jacoby Jones was there for the Longhorns. See what Sonny Cumbie does here for the way this first quarter feels. Is it four down territory. I mean it's 14 nothing first quarter but it kind of feels that way. Yes totally with you Dave no question. Inside zone. Thompson. And he got the first down. Powering to the five yard line. Good hard run by the three time captain who led the Red Raiders in rushing as a freshman and a sophomore in his junior season now from Irving, Texas. First and goal. Had some toughness to him. Runs physically. Fighting through, getting finally gotten healthy after that shoulder injury. Coming to life here on this drive. So a potential 14 point swing here in the first quarter. A block punt by Texas that was returned for a score, but it comes back because of an offside penalty. And I wonder if Thompson is shaken up or it could be the heat. We're approaching 90 degrees here in Austin. Texas leading 14 nothing back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Bees, this is familiar territory in 2021 for Texas Tech down 14 nothing. They've had to come from behind in every game. They've been outscored 42 14 in the first quarter trailed at halftime twice but they're three and oh. Matt Wells said he's learned a lot about this football team. They're veteran, they're mature, and they've showed some real resiliency and validated where this program is. Excellent drive here, first and goal, and there was some movement up front by Texas Tech. Pre snap. The right guard, a little movement on the interior of the right side. Guard to the snap. Full start. Offense, number 77. Five yard penalty. Still first down. It's Ethan Card. In case you're just tuning in, it was 14 0 in Texas. Blocked a punt, returned it for a score, but Keelan Robinson, the man that blocked it, was offside. And that put it from fourth and seven to fourth and two. Texas Tech went for it, got the first down, and here we are, first and goal for Texas Tech at the 10 yard line. And it's a comma down here in the boundary. He's a big factor in the red zone. They bring in motion. They swing it to him here. But the uh, corner wasn't there. And he's tag teamed at the nine. Jaron Thompson there first shoves him out of bounds. Short game. Well, it's Anthony Cook having outstanding outside leverage, forcing Ezukama back inside to the help of the defense. And an awesome job of running to the football by Jaron Thompson, making the tackle on Ezukama, who we've already seen at times very tough with his size to get on the ground. He's got four catches today 20 on the year he averages 117 yards per game he's got 44 so far second down and goal and Thompson gets the carry stiff arming and then ripped down at the six yard line that was a good job by Darian Dunn to get him to the ground so it's third down and goal. Well and Dusty got an obvious passing down here I don't think. I think the best mode of operation is for Tyler Shuck to get on the perimeter get him moving and try and get some movement away to the wide side of the field down here to the bottom. Good to have Luke's back we had some technical difficulty earlier so we couldn't get Tom in third down and goal at the six yard line for Texas Tech. Shuck gonna run it and Shuck dies for Pater touchdown Texas Tech. Boy the Red Raiders needed that his second rushing touchdown of the season. Huge answer for Texas Tech. Tyler Shuck 6'5", 225, 230 with a big arm, very fleet of foot and athletic. 
Big, big answer from Texas Tech. Jonathan Garibay on for the point after. And it's 14 7 instead of 21 to nothing. After a 14 play, six and a half minute drive. Well, here's the here's Keelan Robinson. As you can see, head and shoulder over the football. That drew the flag on the block punt. Gave this Red Raider offense second life. They go for it on fourth down. And as we're going to see here, freeze it for me there. B.J. Foster too far outside. Shuck puts his left foot in the ground, gets vertical, and finds the end zone. Huge play for the Texas Tech quarterback. That's the beauty of college football, right? Things change so quickly. It looks like Texas is dominating. One mistake with Keelan Thompson being offside, then Texas Tech goes for it. Tyler Shuck makes a play. And that, that drive right there looked a lot more like what we expected from the Red Raiders offensively. No question. That's exactly what we had anticipated coming to this ball game. And, you know, good on Matt Wells. Got given a second opportunity, said we got to roll the dice. Our defense has struggled against this Texas offense. Didn't bat an eye, went for it. And then the offensive drive able to cash in six after the miscue from Texas. Just a huge bounce back possession from the Red Raiders. And Jamison will take a knee, so it will come out to the 25. So we got Texas here. Let's talk a little Oklahoma tonight. ABC as the Sooners rank fourth in the country. Welcome West Virginia to Norman. That's at 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific. Dusty, you and I saw Spencer Rattler and the Sooners in person week one. Wasn't all that impressive. Do you feel like he's played better the last couple games? He can continue to play even better. You know, one thing that they, we haven't seen is we haven't seen the big plays from this Oklahoma offense. You'd like to see the run game be able to really get established, make some easier throws for Spencer Rattler. Big game tonight with a good Mountaineer team coming to Norman. Bijan Robinson gets the carry here. Boy, he hits that hole hard and fast. And he's awfully difficult to bring down. Colin Schooler got enough of him to slow him up. A 22-yard game. Well, Christian Jones, 70, with an outstanding block. He gets the movement and push. That hole opens up in the acceleration through the hole for Bijan Robinson. They go right back to him. Might be the same play. Robinson into Tech territory, dropped by Rico Jeffers, but that's six or seven more yards on first down. Hey, Dusty, I'll tell you what, I get the feeling we're going to see stretch right, stretch yep. left for the next two and a half quarters, and I don't think it matters how many people are in the box. We've been seeing it all throughout the early parts of this game. Two tight ends in the game, too. Yep. Definitely feels like last week, Sarkeesian wanted to make a message, and it looks like they want to make that same message here today. Roshan Johnson is in at running back, back to throw. Thompson flips it downfield, and the pass is knocked away at the last second. Taylor Demers, Demerson appeared to get a hand in there on Xavier Worthy. Probably thought he had six. Wow, what an outstanding play, recovery speed to undercut the route. And for, for Demerson to get his hand on that football, felt like it was going to be six. Excellent recovery from the safety, saving a touchdown. So third and four. Texas Tech trying to get lined up. The Longhorn snap it and run to the left, but they don't get the first down. Johnson dropped after a gain of two by Drew, and you'd think Texas would go for it here. Probably another reason why they ran what they did there in third down. I'm expecting, yeah, absolutely. I'm expecting that they go for it. Roshan, powerful back in the backfield, and the quarterback run game always in play. Johnson trying to turn it upfield. He does and gets the first down. Thrown out of play inside the 40 at the 36-yard line. If it's fourth down, you're going for it in this game. Well, there's really good patience here from Roshan. He allows the blocks to set up. Quality block on the perimeter from 68 to senior Derek Kerstetter. And then Johnson easily gets the first down. Dave, you mentioned something two plays ago about Texas Tech just getting to line up. Their tongues are dragging, guys. I mean, th this is a team that's struggling to get in place just prior to the ball getting snapped. Starting to get hotter, too, I imagine, down there in the field. Supposed to hit 90. 
Robinson with the cutback inside the 30 bounces off of another would be tackler and a gain of 12 or 13 every time he touches the ball we see something impressive. It's a dynamic playmaker with the football and so tough to tackle. 12 yards there gets it again here. And this time he gets driven to the ground at the 21 yard line. But still they're getting four yards on first down. Josiah Pierre one of those transfers from Texas Tech from Florida. He made the stop. This is coming no surprise for the defensive coordinator Keith Patterson. He told us last night they fully anticipated a heavy dose of Bijan Robinson for Texas to try to establish the line of scrimmage. The Red Raiders defense hasn't lived up to the challenge so far. Play fake here. Thompson setting up going to the end zone of the ball was thrown out of bounds. Jordan Whittington the intended receiver. It'll be third down and seven. Yeah, one Casey would like to have back there, right? He had Whittington on the wheel rod on the sideline. Ball floated on him and drifted out of bounds. Good play design by Sark once again. Casey Thompson maybe one of the only misses we've seen here in this first half. Three of five on third down, and they scored on fourth down. Robinson with a, re a receiving touchdown. He's got 11 touches, over 100 yards of total offense, 90 on the ground. Third down and seven. There he is leaving the backfield. Thompson from the pocket. Everybody covered, so Thompson takes off. And Thompson able to outrun Texas Tech defenders and get the first down. Yep. Well, watch this. Casey Thompson working through. Go ahead and roll that, guys. Working through. Nothing's open down the field. He sees this open up. And he takes advantage of it. No defenders identify him on the second level. Smart play and a good pickup on third down. So it's first and goal for Texas. Now to go back up two scores here. They'll run it with Johnson. And he's inside the five yard line. That D line for Texas Tech that we thought was really good coming in is not making plays here in this first half. They're getting pushed around, Dave. I mean, they're getting pushed around at the line of scrimmage. Texas absolutely whipping them and dominating here early. Johnson again with the cutback, driving to the goal line, down inside the one. Colin Schooler was there first. Another look here. Make sure that he didn't get that ball across. Nope. Third and goal, and they're getting right to the line. Thompson quarterback sneak trying to put the ball out and get it across no signal yet now we have a signal and it's a Texas touchdown well, they hopped up on the football very quickly before Texas Tech to really get their cleats in the ground I like this watch him nothing's there initially in the middle so he works off to the right over his guard there's a little bit of a hole in the extension over the goal line Heads up play by the quarterback to cap off another scoring drive for the Longhorns. Really smart, Dusty, to notice the defender directly over the center and just avoid him and go into the A gap. Well, Steve Sarkeesian has said one of the reasons we went from Hudson Card to Casey Thompson is he finds a way to move the team down the field and get points. And we've seen that every time Texas has been on the field today offensively as Thompson. Look at the last 16 drives. 13 of them have resulted in touchdowns. Three for three today. He gets his third rushing score of the season and Texas is up 21-7. Who are the three Texas players to reach 1,000 rushing yards in the fewest carries? Think of all the great backs they've had over the years. I got to go with two on the field here, right? What about the ones in, in at the top of your screen Williams? there? And the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, the field's named after him. I think that'll be two of my three. This will be a touchback. It'll come out to the 25. Bijan Robinson on his way to being one of the great Texas backs. Well, we pre previewed him before the game. He's got a little bit of everything you're looking for in a running back. So tough to tackle. Speed and then the versatility out of the backfield. One of the, one of the great playmakers in all of college football. Here's Big 12 play is getting underway. 
Bijan Robinson putting on a show, Dave. Again, every time he touches it, we're seeing something different. Either it's a spin, it's a stiff arm, it's a jump cut. Shuck back to throw on first down. Ezukama, not much. Good D that time. Anthony Cook there first and may have lost a yard on the play. At some point or another, Dusty, Tyler Shuck going to have to work through some progressions to find somebody besides 13 because Texas is going to start shutting that down and forcing the quarterback to go elsewhere. Kalen Geiger, 10, would be a good place to look. Yep, right in the slot. All right, he had six catches last week, over 100 yards. Shuck, dangerous pass, and it's picked off by Josh Thompson. He makes a house call. Touchdown, Texas. Oh my goodness, disastrous for the Red Raiders. Well, it's a long throw, and there wasn't much behind it for Tyler Shuck, and an outstanding play there made by Josh Thompson, anticipating the throw, jumping the route, and taking it to the house. Pete Kwiatkowski told us yesterday they were going to identify and know where 13 was all game long. Great anticipation. As that ball fluttered, Josh Thompson's eyes must have got huge and an easy six for the Longhorns. 28 to 7, Texas with a defensive touchdown from Josh Thompson. All Longhorns in Austin. Presented by Arby's on ABC is brought to you by General Mills. This football season, it doesn't matter where you're watching or how you pregame. We are all tailgate nation. So let's prep your home field with the ultimate game time game plan, including tasty recipes and savings at wearetailgatenation.com. Welcome back to Austin, where Texas is putting it on Texas Tech 28 to 7 after a pick six. The first for the Longhorns in 45 games. And Tyler Shuck, the quarterback for Texas Tech, injured on the play and just went to the locker room. Henry Columbi is listed as their backup, and he does have four starts as a Red Raider, and he's a transfer from Utah State where he backed up Jordan Love. It'll come out to the 25 here for Texas Tech. Don't forget Monday Night Football. It's the Eagles and Cowboys on ESPN at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. ESPN Deportes as well, and the ESPN app. Of course, on ESPN2, you have the Manning brothers breaking down the game from their couches. Been, been fun to watch Eli and Peyton get after it. Normal Monday Night crew does a great job as well. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick, Lisa Salters will have the call on ESPN. Peyton and Eli and many guests on ESPN too. First down from the Texas Tech 25. Columbia's first throw. And getting loose on the perimeter is Geiger. And got a first down to the 35 yard line. Mentioned a transfer from Utah State. Backed up Jordan Love. That's just his second pass attempt this season. He does have a rushing touchdown. He's got hair dusty that you can appreciate from your playing days. Xavier White gets the carry here. And gang tackle Texas flying to the ball defensively. Gain of four. Yeah, they have. They've really done a nice job winning the line of scrimmage and shutting down this Red Raider rushing attack. It's going to be something that Texas Tech needs to complement Columbia as he's coming in. Obviously down 21. You're going to have to get points in bunches, but I don't think Sonny Cumbie's going to want to get too far away from this rushing attack. White again trying to pick a hole. Pushed back the 42 yard line. So they had a block punt return for a touchdown call back because of a Texas penalty. The pick six. And I know they blew out a team that wasn't very good in Rice last week. But this looks a lot different than what we saw two weeks ago against Arkansas. Looks more like what we saw in the opener against Louisiana. I would venture to say this is the best Texas has looked so far this season. Unbelievable start for the Longhorns. 
See if they can stay on the field offensively. They run it on third and four. Thompson can't go anywhere. Overshown stuck him right at the point of attack. Fourth down. Surprised by the conservative play call. All three runs after the first down by Geiger. And Overshown, outstanding job diagnosing the blocking scheme, fighting through the block of the guard, and a big tackle on third down for the senior linebacker. Boy, is this a little early to Whoa. go forward on fourth and six from your 40? Way early. Surprising here. No question, Dave. With a backup quarterback, mind you. I know he started some games. Columbia with time and then just throws it forward underhanded as he's about to hit the ground. It's incomplete. Texas will take over on downs in Tech territory. Great coverage down the field. Nowhere for Columbia to go with the football. And you see the pressure come late. And Columbia just goes to the ground. Nice job by Jacoby Jones getting late pressure. Really good job down the field. Two bodies over there on 13 as a comma. Just nowhere for Columbia to go with that football. Well played by the Texas defense. And there's your defensive coordinator, Pete Kwiatkowski. Huge get Steve Sarkeesian was able to make. Bring him over from Washington. A very well-respected defensive coordinator. He's got his group dialed in. Maybe they put it away here. Thompson dumping it off to Cade Brewer. Upended at the 34-yard line, but they're still getting five, six yards every first down play. Been such a key so far, Dave. First down, finding themselves in second management. How quickly they get up to the ball. Tech not even ready. Robinson close to a first down. The first contact is four or five yards downfield. You know, Dusty, watching this Texas Tech defense the first three weeks, it was movement, it was adjustment, it was post-snap movement, and they were kind of dictating the terms of the line of scrimmage. There's no movement now, and that's why they're getting pushed around. And third and one, get it easily. Three yards, Thompson on the keeper. There's no movement, Tom. You're exactly right. They're barely getting lined up. They look tired. And the Texas offensive line is just completely taking advantage of that. Look at those drives, 10, 9, 12. Is there a lot of credit to wow. what growth in the last two weeks, huh, guys? I mean, watching this team in the offensive line against Arkansas, they embarrassed themselves. And this team has come back with a lot of pride in execution today. That's what Kyle Flood was brought here for, Lukes. No doubt. Very well-respected offensive line coach, also serving as the OC. As the ball's out, Thompson lost it. And he's sacked at the 38-yard line by Tyree Wilson. Really the first negative play we've seen today as Thompson just lost the football. Well, it looked like Thompson, as he was faking to Bijan, that ball got knocked out by Robinson and a heads-up play by Tyree Wilson, unblocked to get Thompson to the ground. Tyree Wilson, 6'6", 275, really one of the more improved players on this Tech front, making a play. So second down and 18. They go empty here. Thompson making a second career start. Wide open in the middle of the field. Ball a little behind Joshua Moore, but he made the catch. He had the game-winning touchdown to beat Texas Tech a year ago in overtime. Big-time adjustment to the football. Ball thrown behind him, but Joshua Moore, with the concentration and adjustment, hauls it in. There's just no pass rush to speak of from Texas Tech right now. Casey Thompson sitting back there with all day to survey the field and find open targets. Right, they had a good run defense. They had four interceptions against Houston to win that game, but not a good showing defensively so far. Thompson going deep into the end zone. What a throw, it's caught for a touchdown by Worthy. Another possession with Casey Thompson on the field. Another touchdown for Texas. 
Well, it's a phenomenal job here getting Worthy open, and you'll see the pick set from Whittington underneath. Man-to-man -man coverage, they can't stay with him. Good protection and a dime delivered from Casey Thompson. It's all Longhorns here in Austin. First half, with five minutes to go, they've given up 281 to Texas. It's 35-7. Casey Thompson having a phenomenal opening half for Texas. Be another touchback. And Texas Tech will start on the 25 with a backup quarterback with Tyler Shuck out because of injury. Affleck. Let's answer the Affleck trivia question. The three Texas players to reach 1,000 rushing yards in the fewest carries. Campbell, Williams, maybe my former teammate, late Cedric Benson. Either him or Jamal Charles. Yep, Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles. Oh, Bichon, Charles. Vince, Young. Vince Young. Vince Young. Ah. And there's Vince. Okay. What was so it like trying to three. tackle him, Dusty? Not easy. That's a big, <laughs> big dude who was an unbelievable college football player. You had a little bit more detail in pregame about one of the times you tried to tackle him as Thompson gets about four yards here on first down. What I said to you is he let me sack him, right? Typically, I hit a quarterback, quarterback fall, and then one time I hit Vince, and Vince kind of stood there, pump fake, pump fake. I think he's like, okay, I feel sorry for Dusty. I'm going to go down. <laughs> Did you hear Dusty? Quarterback fall. <laughs> not Vince Young, though. That one did not. He was incredible in college. Play action for Columbia, and that throw on target. First down catch for Trey Cleveland. Four and a half to go. Texas Tech has all of its timeouts. Questionable decision to go for it on fourth and six. They don't get it. Texas scores just a couple of plays later and maybe puts this one out of reach. Well, let's see. Plenty of time left. It's really more on the Red Raider defense to get a stop. Texas Tech can move the ball and can score. Here's Thompson with a nice running lane into Texas territory to the 40 yard line. A run of 20 yards that time. Brought pressure off the edge. Jared Thompson, he's going to come come in off the outside of your shot. Bring him on a pressure and it's good kick out by the right tackle. Caleb Rogers opens up that hole and that path for Sir Roger Thompson. 47 yards for Thompson. 10 carries had four last week after missing games one and two. They're without Taj Brooks, their leading rusher coming into today because of injury. Columbia going downfield. And that was an excellent throw for a touchdown to Miles Price. 40 yard touchdown strike. Price's first touchdown catch of the season. Absolute dime by Henry Columbia. So he watched the right route by Miles Price, just a corner route. BJ Foster gets over the top late. And that pass plays perfectly from Henry Columbia. Good response and answer there by Texas Tech. But again. The onus is on the defense. High snap, but it's down to the kick good. Can Texas Tech get a stop at some point? Because again, they've got some guys on offense. Henry Columbia coming in relief of an injured Tyler Shock. Finds Price for a touchdown. Just had a defensive touchdown. Red Raiders just scored quickly with Columbia throwing a nice touchdown pass. Here's a short kickoff. The ball is muffed and then taking a knee at the 17 yard line is Sanders. So coming up tonight Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One from Norman Oklahoma ranked fourth in the country. Spencer Rattler don't sleep on Jared Dagey and West Virginia. They just beat Virginia Tech. Let's take a look at this week's AP rankings brought to you by Goodyear Alabama with an easy one. Same for Georgia, probably for Oregon as well. Arizona lost to Northern Arizona. Penn State leading Villanova. Clemson at NC State, and then obviously AM Arkansas. Huge game for Dallas. No question. No, no doubt about that. That game in Jerry World is going to be off the charts later on this afternoon.
First down for Texas on its 16 yard line. Keep it on the ground here. Huge gap right between the tackles for Robinson gets a first down. You got to wonder based on what Arkansas did to Texas and what we're seeing for the Longhorns today. Maybe Arkansas is just really good. We'll find out more today if they beat A&M. Absolutely because at the line of scrimmage it was a completely different football game and they were unbelievably impressive in Fayetteville a few weeks ago. Here comes a jet sweep. And more is toppled at their, excuse me, Worthy rather, at the 30 yard line. So a short gain of two. Well, we've seen the skill set of Xavier Worthy on display already. And this young man has a chance to be an absolute star. Steve Sarkeesian told us he's already picked up so much of the offense, he's moving him around all over. And the ways he did with Devontae Smith, last year's Heisman Trophy winner. Not that he is on Devontae's level yet, but that's the type of upside Sark sees. And the young freshman receiver. Texas with all of its timeouts. Same with Texas Tech. Play fake here for Thompson. Setting up. Going deep. Flag down. And it's an incomplete pass. Flag was at the 45 yard line. Joshua Moore being covered by Rashad Williams. Two flags. Actually, there's one on the other side of the field at midfield. Two defensive holding penalties because they got Worthy as well. well. Worthy put on a double move, yep. and if there wasn't a grab, it may have been six. Now, at least they're being thorough. We're seeing a lot of discussion today from the officials, and when they did this earlier, they picked up one of the flags. I'll tell you, I tell you what, Dusty, Sark's going through the jugular now. Mm -hmm. There were two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Holding defense number 25, that penalty is declined. Holding defense number 12, that foul is accepted. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot results in an automatic first down. Fields there, but they tackled him. Go right back to the rushing attack. And Robinson, boy, he, he's like parallel to the ground. He's almost down, but he keeps the feet moving and gets nine yards. He keeps his feet moving, and there's just so much movement along that Texas Tech defensive line. Outstanding job by the left side, paving that hole and the burst from Robinson. Robinson with the jump cut. And the first down. Look at him go. Robinson still going. And finally, this is comical. They can't get this guy down, even when they hit him 10 times. Absolute effort after contact. You see the jump cutting. You see the toughness. A little spin. Not going to be denied. Not going to go down. A little flex on everybody as he signals for another first down. He's got 96 rushing yards, about to go over 100 for the sixth time in the last eight games a minute 35 to play Texas still with all of its timeouts Roshan Johnson gets the carry here pick up of about two Tony Bradford on the tackle just one step ahead Dusty it's it's one formation ahead one personnel grouping ahead. He just they've got Texas Tech on their heels to the point where their heads are spinning so fast they don't know what's coming next. A lot of two tight end sets today too, Tom. A little bit of bully ball been going on in this first half. No doubt. Johnson straight ahead. Down to about the 35. See if uh, Sark uses a timeout here. For third down. Nope. 50 seconds remaining in the half. Boy, for Texas Tech, who will get the ball to start the second half, you, you'd think to have any sort of shot. Right, got it. Got to get a stop here and hold Texas to a field goal. Something they have not done yet. No question. No stop yet. Xavier Worthy up top. Bijan, right of the backfield. Thompson with a ton of time. Receiver comes open. The pass is caught at the 10. I don't know if that's who it was intended for. Whittington's pointing at Josh Moore like, I got you. That ball's overthrown, but I'm there for 25 yards. Everything going right for Casey Thompson and the Longhorns. Overshoots his target, Whittington. 
They go right back to Johnson with the carry and he pushes his way down to about the seven. They got to call a timeout with 13 seconds to go. Just one of them days man. Mm -hmm. Two timeouts remaining. So coming up next on ABC it's Michigan Rutgers Tennessee Florida tonight on ESPN Florida still number 11 good showing against Alabama a lot of people didn't see that coming No, the line of scrimmage too. the way they absolutely ran the football at will on that Crimson Tide defense I think that took everyone aback good showing from Emory Jones you know the game that intrigues me I think the most Clemson who are they what are they going to be DJ Uyunglele in that offense that NC State defense has been really good. Clemson has had their issues on the road in Raleigh before. Fascinating matchup to see. Don't we all just kind of expect DJ and that offense to get rolling? See if today's that day. No, Dusty, it's interesting too because Clemson's had some of the same issues in the offensive line early that Texas had had early. Let's see if Clemson can look like Texas does today. It's going to be a direct snap. They go Wildcat here with Roshan Johnson and Bijan Robinson both in the backfield. Johnson's going to take the direct snap here. With Robinson blocking, he opens up a hole, and Johnson's in for the Texas touchdown. Nine seconds to go in the half. Texas has put up 41. Well, it's a nice block on the outside by Kate Brewer. Did you guys reference Bijan Robinson? He's done everything else. Why not be a lead blocker? Get him right there, get a piece. And the physical running style of Roshan Johnson into the end zone. Just a simple quarterback sweep around the edge. Good lead blocking out in front. And that that for Texas Tech. Because they're going to the review this. The touchdown on the previous play is under further review. But that that's got to hurt. I mean, you you needed a stop. You just scored a touchdown. You needed to find a way to hold Texas at worst to three. But this is just a, an all out mismatch. Yeah. Awfully hard to tell from that angle. Yep. Tough to find anything definitive there. Can't tell there, no. If he's not in, they, they'd have to use a timeout, and they have two of those, and then you got nine seconds to go, but. Should stand right. Yeah, it sure looked to me like. I've not seen a look. Affinity shows that he was not in. The call on the field was a touchdown. That ball looks like he gets over the front of the goal line. This is going to stand. Yep. Talking with people around this football team, Roshan Johnson, not just the running backs room leader, not just the offensive leader, but the team leader of this. The willingness to do whatever it takes to help the team. And he's found Pater twice this afternoon. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands. So this is a Texas Tech defense that came in statistically with really good numbers. And also, I know you and Tom watching tape all week were impressed with what you saw. I mean, they are absolutely getting demolished here in the first half. There's no question. Tom and I thought this could be a real issue for Texas based off of what both teams had put on tape. Boy, Texas, though, with the physicality they're playing, with the pace in which they're getting up to the football, Texas Tech, you just look overwhelmed defensively from what this offense has been able to do. 355 yards of total offense for Texas. Dicker makes it 42 14. We'll be back in 10 seconds. Now we'll look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. A lot to celebrate right now. Boy, Texas, the last two weeks after that loss to Arkansas, looking like an entirely different team. This is the first Big 12 home game for new head coach Steve Sarkeesian, replacing Tom Herman. Sark coming off a, a very successful two year run as the offensive coordinator at Alabama under Nick Saban, won the Broyles Award. It's one of the brightest minds in college football on offense. No question. And this is what 
I think Longhorns fans, Longhorns administration, what they hoped and expected when they went and got Steve Sarkeesian from Alabama. Everybody sat back and watched that national championship game and you just thought, wow, what could be? It's starting to become a reality here in Austin. Nine seconds to go. And Texas Tech electing to run this out. Tom Townsend across the 20 and up to the 30 yard line with two seconds to go. Texas Tech will have to run one play and then we'll go to halftime. Eighth year for Sark, head coach at USC in Washington. Also spent a little time in the NFL, was a really good player at BYU. In fact, played against Matt Wells when Matt was the quarterback at Utah State. Wells, the head coach at Texas Tech. Also was a foe of our man on the sidelines, Tom Luganbill. Tom knows Sark very well from the playing days. The junior college has squared off one of many uh, stops for, for Tom along the way as they run to uh, Xavier White. And that's the end of the first half. Texas dominant most first half points in a conference game in four years. They lead Texas Tech 42 14. When we come back, Kevin Agandi, Booger McFarland will catch you up with everything on the State Farm halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Beach. ERK Texas Memorial Stadium you're watching the Big 12 Conference on ESPN 42 to 14 Texas over previously undefeated Texas Tech Bijan Robinson an incredible first half for the Longhorns he was everything we built him up to be making people miss getting involved as a pass catcher and how about Casey Thompson the poise from the pocket really surveyed the field and he has been outstanding here as he finds Xavier Worthy and this team they love him as Sark told us this is his team Texas Tech will get the ball to start the second half a touchback it'll come out to the 25 all right we've touched on it Dusty throughout this game about how poorly Texas played against Arkansas but they look like an entirely different team under the competition's a little bit different but what stands out to you the most about what's different about Texas here today? The offensive line play. I think the offensive line here so far against Texas Tech has been outstanding. And they were bad against Arkansas. Arkansas had their way. And here today, it's been great protection. It's been movement up front to help allow B. John Robinson and help allow Casey Thompson the time to operate and have the success we've seen in the first half. It's Dusty Dvorak. I'm Dave Pash. Tom Luganville in a second. Backup quarterback. Henry Columbian for the injured Tyler Shuck and no game for Ezukama. Well guys I tell you talking to Steve Sarkeesian coming out of the locker room his slogan from the moment he arrived here is all gas no brakes. He told me and he was excited he said we got to put the pedal down to the ground. We cannot let up. I need to get our guys to believe that the slogan is real and that's what we live by. First home game for Sark in conference play. Columbia throwing again the catch made at the 30 yard line by Price but again Texas defenders every time there's a ball carrier or a receiver there are multiple defenders in there for Texas and that was Thornton leading the way pursuit to the football good tackling We've seen that defensive line really hold up and be sturdy up front see a Pete Kwiatkowski Dows up a little pressure here to try to heat up Columbia to start this second half. Four starts a year ago came in middle of the second quarter for the injured Tyler Shuck. Columbia into traffic and it's intercepted at the 40 yard line by Brockermeyer. And he's knocked out of bounds inside the 30. The second interception today by Texas. The other one returned for a touchdown. Another big play. For Pete Kwiatkowski's defense. This pass sails a little high on Columbia. Receiver unable to grab it. He gets upended. And it's Luke Brockemeyer, the legacy at Texas. Guy that loves this program as much as anybody out there in the right spot at the right time. Ball in his hands. And a big play 
for the junior linebacker who really, when you watch the tape, leaves it all on the field. Celebration on the sidelines. You talked about the legacy. His dad, Blake, great player, both at Texas and in the NFL. Luke's a former walk-on. Texas takes over at the 25-yard line. Bijan Robinson, three-yard pickup, brought down by Taylor Demerson. Forty two fourteen and there was a block punt return for a touchdown that was called back because of an offside penalty. There were a lot of people thought Texas Tech could come and win this game not just stay in the game but win it because of an improved defense. At least that's what we thought coming in in the top ten and rushing yards per game allowed Thompson all day to throw everybody covered so he takes off inside the 20 flag down and Thompson ripped out of bounds. Good tackle though legal play anyway by Eric Monroe. But again a penalty flag thrown in the backfield for Texas. I think this is going to stand Dave I think they're going to get a hold but once again it's good coverage down the field watching Thompson go through his progressions. Holding offense number 70 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Still second down. Look Steve Sarkeesian made the decision initially to go with Hudson Card over Casey Thompson. Then he wasn't afraid even though cards numbers were really good week one not so good week two but you talked about this not really all his fault to go to Casey Thompson that move obviously has paid off and the confidence that they have in Casey Thompson to move the team and score which they couldn't do week two against Arkansas as he keeps it here and gets to the 28 yard line. Gain of about four or five. You know, sometimes you get those quarterbacks guys that may not look the best in drills, may not look the best in seven on seven, but then when the bright lights come on and you put them in the game, all that happens is the offense moves downfield. You can't explain why, but it's just a feeling, and that's what he's got. Got a third and 15 here. Texas Tech has not been able to get them off the field. They have 360 yards of total offense in the game. They're 8 of 10 on third down. That's 80 percent. Thompson, time to throw. Everybody covered again. Thompson trying to extend the play. Now fires into the end zone, and it's intercepted his first mistake. Taylor Demerson got the pick. Thompson just trying to do a little bit too much there, Dave. You know, good coverage down the field. Nobody was coming open. You saw Casey Thompson break the pocket, reset his feet, and he takes the shot down the field to Joshua Moore. But finally, this Red Raider defense steps up and makes a play. We'll see if the offense can respond. Let's go back and take a look at this interception from Casey Thompson and it was really good coverage initially down the field. Okay, and then he's going to break loose. He's going to come and he's going to reset his feet. Now right here. Okay. You got coverage down here. It's going over the top to take it away. Vision here. He could get up the sidelines. Take what he could get. He takes a chance. Nice play by the defender over the top. The underneath coverage from Taylor Dimerson and an interception for Casey Thompson. Henry Columbi staying in the game at quarterback takes off here came in for an injured Tyler Shuck in the first half gain of a couple before he's dropped by Overshone and we've got an injured Texas player Keandre Coburn actually no let's uh, double check not sure on the number we'll hold off not 100 percent sure it was 99 back in a second. Down crew on ESPN and the app. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs taking on Justin Herbert, who will sit down with Mina Kimes. Plus, the segment fans love you got Moss, Randy Moss, ranking the week's best catches. So it was Moro Ojimo that was shaken up for Texas, but he jogged off under his own power and looks ready to go back in. Has to sit for at least one play. Second and 10 for Texas Tech, trailing 42 to 14. Here in Austin and a penalty marker down more problems for the Red Raiders. 
remains second down. Tonight, two title fights and the return of Nick Diaz to the Octagon to take on former champ Ruthless Robbie Lawler, highlighting the UFC 266 stack card. Prelims on ESPN News, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus starting 8 Eastern, followed by the main card on pay-per-view. Go to ESPNplus.com, uh, ESPNplus.com slash PPV to order in English and Spanish. So second and 13, run play. Thompson gobbled up, and another penalty flag. I think it's going to go 76, Caleb Rogers. Grab Jacoby Holy Jones on the edge. Offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty correction. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Still second down. Red Raiders moving in the wrong direction. False start and then a holding call. Dusty, there's just no push. Uh, you know, when you watch this offensive line, everything's position block. Got a lot of guys standing straight up, and that is a pretty hefty group that Texas has within their front. They're not driving anybody down the field. Exactly right, Tom. They got big physical bodies up front for the Texas D-line. And they have won the line of the scrimmage so far today. And they declined that penalty, Texas did. So third down and 11 for Texas Tech. Columbia in trouble, spins out of there. Another flag, this will be holding. Columbia's pass is caught. It's a first down, but it's going to be negated. Geiger got the 31. <laughs> Left tackle. Offense number 51. TJ Storm at the left the tackle. Still, goal. still third down. Transfer from TCU. Not happy about the call. It's a big addition to start the season. You got Jacoby Jones working over there on that side, trying to get that long arm up. And it's there as he tries to separate the grab and not letting go of the defender is what drew the flag from the official. Third down and 20 for Texas Tech. Already two turnovers by the Red Raiders. One on the last possession, an interception thrown by Columbia on a tip ball. He'll throw it here from his goal line. He gets hit and sacked. He did get out of the end zone, but he's dropped at the one yard line by Alfred Collins. Well, you want to talk about creativity. Pete Kwiatkowski, look at this. How often do you see that? And then watch right here, Alfred Collins is going to work on the guard. And he's going to win inside. Quick swim, and he gets to the quarterback. Looked like the old eye formation right there on the defense. Pete Kwiatkowski having some fun. And Alfred Collins, who I've referenced earlier, the most talented defense alignment, wins inside for a big sack. Looked like an inbounds in a basketball game. <laughs> exactly. Got guys lined up, ready to set screens, don't know where they're going. They set up the return here. McNamara with the punt, and the dangerous Jamison on the return. He's got some room down the sideline. Jamison with speed past everybody, tiptoeing the sideline, but he stepped out at the seventh. Deshaun Jamison, one of the best return men in college football, has got three career returns for scores. Well, this is really well blocked along the sidelines. They set up the wall, and then the speed of Jamison on display. Red Raiders fortunate to push him out where they did at the seven. It's extremely well executed by the special teams unit. As you see the step out of bounds right about the seven. Well done. One of those decisions not to come after it, paying off in field position. Been a brilliant game for the Texas coaching staff. First and goal at the seven yard line of Texas Tech. Lewin looking to add to this 42 to 14 lead. They give to Robinson. Spilled at the four. Pick up a three. Bijan Robinson, outstanding sophomore from Tucson. And he's right at 100 rushing yards on the day. The sixth time in the last eight games. Got a glimpse last year towards the end of the season. I was surprised it took so long to get him in the flow a season ago. Doesn't take long to watch him and know he's there's something different and special about B. John Robinson. And here is a jet sweep. Winnington into the end zone. Texas touchdown.
We saw creativity defensively, a little creativity here. Bring Whittington in jet motion, just a little flip, shovel pass. And Jordan Whittington, the former running back, now wide receiver, finds the end zone for the Longhorns. Casey Thompson's third touchdown pass of the day, 48 to 14. Whittington's second touchdown catch of the year. Cameron Dicker makes it 49 14. Well, it's three phases in football. Special team sets up outstanding field position for the Longhorns and a little creativity from Sark. And Jordan Whittington has the horns in the end zone again. And not a lot of people saw this coming because Texas Tech came in decent defensively and always potent offensively, but man, the Longhorns have been unstoppable. 49 to 14. Texas is at TCU next week. And they play Oklahoma on October 9th. Let's take a look at the father of Texas defensive end Ray Thornton as we honor those who serve. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. His dad is U.S. Army CW4 Rasan Thornton. And we certainly thank him and all of you who have served currently serving or will serve in the future. Thank you so much for all you do. No doubt well said. Thank you all for your service. Texas Tech going to keep it on the ground here with Thompson. Maybe two on that first down carry. Ojimo, good to see him back healthy on the field. Making a tackle. How about this with Moro Ojimo? He's only six foot three, but he's got an 83 and a half inch wingspan, six and 11 and a half. Now inside, getting on those guards. He can get those hands on him right now, get separation to make plays. That's what happened there on first down. I had to think about it. you said 83 and a half. I had to think I went to Syracuse not Oklahoma so it took me a little bit of time to everybody can't get the finest of education today. <laughs> Columbia in traffic. Ball is caught by Geiger. It's going to be third down and three. Texas Tech plays at West Virginia next week and have to wonder, you know, based on the expectations after starting 3 0 for the first time in four years, yes, they were down in their previous three games, but they, they ended up winning those games. Well, could this have a hangover effect if it keeps getting sideways like that and Texas puts up a big number? Starting quarterback Tyler Shuck got hurt in the first half after a pick six. Columbia throwing a deep ball, a lot of contact. It's caught at the 35 yard line and gone. Fungi takes it all the way for the touchdown. He got pushed out of bounds, came back in, made the catch, getting past Deshaun Jamison for 69 yards. Huge play for Fungi. And as we're going to see, the defender, Jamison, works Fungi out of bounds. He's going to work back in, reestablish himself inbounds. And you see Schooler take out Jamison as Fungi strolls into the end zone. Right, if he goes out on his own, right. then he can't be the first guy to touch it. But he was blocked out. That's a different rule than the NFL. And you're allowed to come back in. And reestablish himself back in bounds, made the catch, and finish it off with a touchdown. Really well thrown ball there by Henry Columbi. Put a lot of air underneath it to allow his receiver to make that catch. Nice answer there from Henry Columbi in the Tech offense. Loic Fungi, sophomore from Midland, Texas, who was born in Cameroon, moved to Texas at age eight. And I don't think the fans here know the rule. That's why they're booing, because they saw the offensive player go out of bounds. But it is a touchdown. Fade working down the sideline. See Jamison get his body into him, force him out. Fungi reestablishes, and then a mistake by Brendan Schooler, taking out his own man, head down, and Fungi takes it the distance to the house.
Check out Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Tonight, Kansas State currently 25th in the country, taking on Oklahoma State. Wednesday, Red Raider football with Matt Wells breaking down this game and looking ahead to the West Virginia game. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Is Kansas State for real? They've been great so far. Nice way to get Stanford to kick things off in Arlington. They got a win as an underdog at home against Nevada last week. You know, it'll be fascinating to see. Skylar Thompson's out now. Will Howard has come back in. Had changed her season a year ago. He's 1-0 so far this year, getting the win over Nevada. But can he make the throws down the field once they get into Big 12 play? It's a real question mark, but a great start to the season for Chris Kleiman's crew. Trey Wolf and Deshaun Jamison never afraid to run it out. We already saw him almost return a punt for a touchdown, but Tech did a pretty good job covering this kick. Jamison down at the 13. Let's go to the studio and check in with Kevin Agandi. Playing in the spaceship that landed at Old Soldier Field. He used to play in that venue it's for four years. It's stomping grounds. That's so what we got spaceship. coming up here. Rutgers, Michigan, 3.30 on ABC. So about an hour from now or so. Oklahoma, West Virginia, our ABC primetime game. What about Oregon and the start that the Ducks have had? Currently third in the country as Texas keeps it on the ground on first down and a gain of a couple for Robinson. They pulled the improbable earlier this season, right, by going into the shoe and coming away with a victory. Been the real bright spot for the Pac-12 so far this season. They've been really impressive to watch Anthony Brown and that offense work. Going back to Soldier Field, wasn't it odd, though, to walk into, again, it's old. So it looks like a spaceship landed at Old Soldier Field. You are so right. It does. But I sure enjoy playing there. <laughs> Make fun of it all you want. <laughs> Dusty's not old enough not to remember the old soldier field. Great venue for football. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I, big hit on the carry there as Robinson is knocked down by Reggie Pearson. Third down coming up. You're just stating the obvious, yes. what you're telling yeah. me. And it does definitely look like a spaceship landed right there on Soldier Field. But great venue for football right there on Lake Michigan. Bears fans. That's a game, though, you'd love to see. I, I know because you're in Big Ten play, it's hard for Wisconsin. Would you love to see that game in November? Notre yeah. Dame, Wisconsin, Cold, and Soldier maybe Field. Maybe some flurries coming down, no question. Tech forced the first punt of the day. Third down and six. Thompson climbing the pocket. His pass is pulled in for a first down, and Whittington breaks a tackle. Whittington finally caught up to on the Texas Tech side of the field at the 47 yard line. Another big play for the Texas offense, 36 yards. Yet yeah, it's Casey Thompson. Look, the protection's good. He steps up, locates his target, and you see the strong running ability from Jordan Whittington. Fights through the initial tackle, a little stiff arm, and a huge gain on third down. And not sure what the stoppage is for here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Injured player. It's Demarcus Fields for Texas Tech. 6.15 to go. All right, so we talked about, you know, for Texas Tech, is it possible that this could be a game that hangs over to the next week and the week beyond? What about for Texas with this performance? You're now in conference play. You go to TCU next week. Yeah, no question. And that, that's kind of the thing we've talked about. Texas handling success. And I think that's one of the things Sark and this, this coaching staff has really tried to impress upon them. Look, you got to bring it each and every week. And just because you play well one week and you win a game, that doesn't mean that it changes how you go about preparing the next week. Handling success is one of the things we talked with Sark about yesterday. And I think that's going to be a big point of emphasis after this impressive showing for the long run. Robinson bouncing it to the perimeter. Inside the 20, finally knocked out of bounds. He's well over 100 yards on the day. This guy's just too strong, too fast. Showing a little bit of patience here, right? Evades the initial defender, finds the sidelines. Good blocking down the field by Whittington. Ejon can do no wrong today. 33-yard run. 
almost 200 yards from scrimmage. Roshan Johnson gets the call. He shakes defenders. Takes it inside the five for a Texas first down. He's kind of the punisher, right? You see him with some moves in the open field, making people miss, but when he lowers that shoulder, Sean Johnson like a battering ram, sticking it up in there. Play fake, Thompson with a quick throw. Another bullet on the money to Xavier Worthy. Texas touchdown. Second for Worthy, fourth touchdown pass for Casey Thompson. Let's take a look here. He's going to just work up the field. This ball is actually thrown a little bit behind Worthy. How about that little stutter to throw the defender off? Nice adjustment to the football, the toe tap. He got a good one in Xavier Worthy. Wow, what a talented, true freshman wide receiver for this offense. It's 56 to 21 Texas with 514 to go in the third. Bijan Robinson though has been the story. We talked about him right at the top of the telecast. And again, just whether it's outrunning guys, taking on multiple defenders, breaking tackles, pushing the pile downfield, he's done it all. You name it, he's done it. Wearing number five, grew up. A huge Reggie Bush fan. They'll have the same style, but a similar effect. And the versatility in different ways he can impact this offense off the charts. A real weapon at the disposal for Steve Sarkeesian. And I, I thought it was interesting, you know, talking about Bijan and Ricky Williams dubbed him and gave him the nickname Little Ricky. And he doesn't throw away th those kind of doesn't throw out those kind of compliments very often, right. but I think he sees what everyone's starting to see in B. John Robinson. It's our game track brought to you by Mission Tiger. So what is the comp then? I mean, we've kind of been talking about this all week because you said his favorite player growing up in Tucson on the West Coast was Reggie Bush wearing the number five, but they are very different players. This will be a touchback. I think guys that are playing now in the NFL, I see a little bit of Alvin Kamara in him. He's a little bit taller than Kamara, but I see similar skill set, what he can do in the catch game, the versatility. I threw out Marshall Falk, and that's somebody that Lukes knows very well. Yeah, I think all of those are comparable traits. I think the one thing about Bijan is there's a little more physicality to his style. Yeah. He can make the jump cuts, he can make you miss, he's got wiggle, he can turn the corner and set the edge, but then when he needs to, he can pack a wallop. Two Heisman Trophy winners at Texas, Earl Campbell in 77, Ricky Williams in 98. Columbia back to throw, takes another shot downfield, another ball that's thrown on target. Geiger trying to run away from Jamison. He's into the end zone for a touchdown, 75 yards. What a response here by Henry Columbia. Good coverage down the field. Jamison is step for step with Geiger. Just a perfectly placed ball over his shoulder. And then the speed for Geiger to get in the end zone. Wow. No, Dusty, by my count, this offense has taken three shots, all with Columbia. All three are touchdowns. Aside from that, they have not attempted a throw downfield to the latter top third of the field. Henry Columbia stepped in. He's been great so far this afternoon. Eight completions, three for touchdowns. But the defense not allowing them to go toe to toe with Texas because the Longhorns keep coming back with a response. Deshaun Jameson, we know he's got speed, just one on one, just a go ball down the field. Perfectly placed ball. Geiger gets a step on Jameson, and it's off to the races. Quick answer once again from the Red Raiders. At the very least, Matt Wells has to be pleased about that aspect of this, right? This team, though his defense can't seem to find a way to get stops, under the guidance of the backup quarterback, Henry Columbia, they continue to respond and bounce back. Still fighting, and then you don't know the severity of the injury to shock, and would Columbia be the starter next week? Sonny Cumbie, outstanding coach, back. 
at Texas Tech where he played as a former walk on and coached there from 2009 to 2013 went to TCU for seven years and back in Lubbock replacing the fired David Yost. But to your point if you can't stop anybody and this is a problem Texas Tech has long had they just defensively haven't been very good but they can be in a shootout with different teams and, and Dusty don't you agree that Texas Tech coming into this game and what we saw on tape when they got taken out of their comfort zone and what they want to be they, they just couldn't compete. Yeah no question and they've been wanting to try to change the identity of this defense. How many times do we hear Keith Patterson talk about that. We don't want to be known as that same Texas Tech defense and trying to change that aspect. Well it's it's a hard job Texas Tech is a very very hard job to win at. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live My Student section of the year contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. The Longhorn Hellraisers founded in 1988. They support all UT athletics by creating an exciting and winning environment. The students can be found at every single athletic event on campus. Great crowd today. Beautiful new south end zone here. Extremely well done. Two hundred million dollar renovation. Got the Earl Campbell and Ricky Williams new name on the field. Thompson pulls it back and dumps it off to Cade Brewer. Lunges to the 29 yard line for a pickup of four. Texas Tech has shown it can score quickly. Can they get a stop quickly and maybe put another touchdown on the board and at least make Texas a little nervous to start the fourth. Thompson swinging it to the other side. That was a great throw out in front to Moore. It's a first down at the 37. Yeah, allowed Joshua Moore to catch that football in stride to continue to work forward right after the catch as Casey Thompson has not been hit much today hit as he delivers that pass. Perfectly placed ball to his wideout. Play action. Thompson stepping up in the pocket. Open receiver is Xavier Worthy, and he breaks tackles, running free, outrunning defenders. Another Texas touchdown. They've scored 62 on a 62 yard catch and run. That is the fifth touchdown pass for Casey Thompson to go with a touchdown run. I guess we should stop saying if, if only Texas Tech could get a stop. I don't think it's happening today. He did have the one interception, but have yet to force a punt. And as Tom said, coming out of the half, all gas, no breaks. This Texas offense has not slowed down in any way. Dicker makes it 63 to 28. We told you from the onset an impact player and someone to watch is going to be Xavier Worthy. Just a dig across the middle. You see him go up, elevate the strong hands, and then the playmaking ability with the football in his hands breaks the tackle, and it's off to the races. You will not catch him as he's got elite speed in the open field and a huge day for the true freshman Xavier Worthy now his third touchdown reception of the afternoon and, and Dusty when you look at Xavier Worthy and you look at his recruitment when Sark was at Alabama he was responsible for California recruited Xavier hard they wanted him bad in Tuscaloosa instead he decides to go to Michigan. Sark comes back around here to Texas and it's the great lesson of why you don't burn bridges in recruiting maintained a good relationship with the kid things didn't pan out with Texas gets out of his letter of intent ends up signing here now if you're a Texas fan you need to look at what Xavier Worthy looks like his body type that's the type of athlete Texas is going to be pursuing going forward lean wiry wiggly like a rubber band and speed to take the top off the field. Tom as somebody who has recovered recruiting as long as you have why is you going to kick off here that's a, that's popped into the field to play it's going to be a touchback 
Why can Sark be different in terms of his recruiting style or what he has at his disposal compared to Charlie Strong Tom Herman. I think what he's learned over the last couple of years in Tuscaloosa is that it's not about what other people say. It's not about what the Internet says. It's about their own evaluation trusting the evaluation of not only getting the best player but getting the right player. Uh, there, there, there's a difference between recruiting and evaluating. Lots of guys can go out and recruit, but are you evaluating the right guy that fits who you are? And you got to block out a lot of hands in the cookie jar here. There's no doubt about that. If you do, you'll be successful long term. Henry Columbi back on the field, rolling out here. He's taking a couple of deep shots that have gone for touchdowns here. He's just going to keep it. And now he gets rid of it. Well, look, it was clear last year that. They were going to make a change. Even during the season, Chris Del Conte, relatively new athletic director, came over from TCU in 2017, was going to make a change. Tried some really big names, even bigger names than Sark, couldn't get that person. But having the previous experience at you know, major programs, in particular USC, they felt very confident that Sark was the right guy to get them back to being where Matt Brown had them. Last national championship 2005 2009 the last time they won the Big 12 and they made it to the title game losing to Alabama price on the catch out to the 42 yard line. So you look at the last 23 years. This includes a, you know, the one year there for back in 2010 but obviously a ton of success. And then over the last decade not much. What a run for Mac Brown and it kind of just gives you a glimpse of what this program is capable of and the day Chris Del Conte hired Steve Sarkeesian I thought they found their guy it didn't work with Charlie Strong it didn't work with Tom Herman but it feels like this is right and a great statement here in his first opportunity in Big 12 play flag down holding probably Columbia tackled at the 41. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 51, 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Still second down. You don't see offensive face mask uh, very often, but there it is on TJ Stormont. No. Second time we've seen a flag on Stormont. On the side, working on Ray Thornton, gets up in his face mask. Right call by the official. So second and 18 at the 35 yard line of Texas Tech. Columbia another flag down my goodness good pass caught in Texas territory by McLean Mannix it's a first down if it stands. It won't. Illegal formation. Offense number 51 was not lined up on the line of scrimmage. That's a five yard penalty. Remains second down. Well, TJ Storm, a good player, transfer from TCU, but had a rough day and back to back penalties now and then. Too far in the backfield, trying to give himself a little bit of cushion, a little bit of help, and pass protection. Charles had another flag on this drive. So he's going to watch this one from the sideline. Second and 23. Columbia has a completion to the 37 yard line. Darian Dunn picks up and drops Trey Cleveland. See, in Texas playing two high safeties now. They've been beat over the top a couple of times. It's like Pete Kwiatkowski giving some help over the top. Try to prevent another big play down the field. Got to remember, all gas, no breaks doesn't just apply to the offense. There's going to be some great teaching tools off of this game defensively for Coach Kwiatkowski. Pressure coming off the edge. Columbia stepping up and running. He's across midfield. He gets the first down. Good job by Columbia. For B.J. Foster caught up to him. They pick up third down and 16 with an 18 yard run. Really good choice. Nothing down the field. 
The offensive line, it opens up in the middle. Only Brocker Myers there in the middle of the field, and it was a foot race, and Columbia won, getting it to the sticks and converting on a big third long. Had the interception, Columbia did, but otherwise he, he's played solid football. Made some great throws on deep balls. Transfer from Utah State was the backup to Jordan Love there. On target throw to Geiger. Brought down by Dunn at the 40, a gain of five. It's a veteran Texas Tech team with 12 super seniors, guys that use that final year of eligibility because of COVID as Columbia takes off, throws at the last second incomplete. They have a lot of transfers that are veteran players, so obviously Matt Wells hoping that those veterans will be very vocal this week in practice after this performance trying to say you know what that's one game all right we're good enough we feel confident we can still do something in Big 12 play. No question have to go to Morgantown next week he's going to rely on those 12 super seniors to lead after a showing like this. It's third down and five four down territory of course. Play clock at two. Thompson gets the carry and doesn't get the first down, but they'll go for it on fourth down in a couple. White box, and it's well defensed by the Texas Longhorns. Not much running room whatsoever on the interior there for Sir Roger Thompson. There's five in the box, Dusty. I, I mean, that, you got to be able to run it. It's kind of telling, isn't it, when you. You're going five of the box and, and you're stopping the run. Absolutely. Fourth down and two. They've gone for it twice converted once. Texas showing blitz they able to get into the backfield. It's Sorrell making the tackle on Thompson for a loss. Texas takes over on downs. Well, Pete Kwiatkowski he dialed it up pressure off of both edges and it's inside. You'll see the blitz off the edge get home. Everything they're dialing up seems to be working in the true freshman Sorrell getting in on the action. And they're taking Casey Thompson out of the game and going to Hudson Card. Thompson with five touchdown passes and a touchdown run. So Card, who started the opener against Louisiana, threw two touchdowns and a rushing touchdown, struggled against Arkansas. The whole team struggled. He was replaced week three by Thompson, but he's out there now, handing off to Roshan Johnson. Out of bounds around the 45 yard line. Card is from Austin. He's a talented kid, Dave. I mean, the ball jumps out of his hand. Really athletic. I thought in the opener against Louisiana, he played very well. And again, as Sark told us, it wasn't so much about what Hudson Card wasn't doing or didn't do, it was about what Casey Thompson was doing when he made the move. And went to his junior quarterback. Production and, and Thompson has delivered every time he's been on the field. They've scored the last few games. They don't have to snap it here. And so we'll go to the fourth quarter with Texas in full command. The Longhorns a quarter away from a three and one start. 63 28 they lead Texas Tech. We will be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The eight, the Longhorns. Leading Texas Tech before they go to TCU next week, then Oklahoma the week after that. They still have to go to Iowa State and they play against Kansas State here in Austin. Keelan Robinson, another weapon. He's the number three running back, but he can play for a lot of teams and transfer from Alabama. Speed, speed, speed. Explosive with the football in his hands. He showed that last week against Rice. See how quick he gets to the edge there on second down. There's an official stoppage there. There's a person down over on the Texas Tech sideline that may have got tangled up there with Robinson. Yeah, David, it's a yard marker attendee. 
as they went out of bounds they collided. all right over there but went down hard we saw it right away watch here as Robinson gets oh yeah oh, boy he, he got his Taylor Demerson you know obviously accidental leg whip there for Texas on its 49 yard line Robinson very patiently gets the first down and more inside the 30 and finally run out of bounds what another great run by a Texas tailback flicks the patience of Keelan Robinson nothing is there initially and it's a really good block by 76 to help pave that path and open up the whole Hayden Connor the true freshman key block to help spring at Keelan Robinson run. Dude, he's like silk, man. I, I, as this offense evolves, you watch Sark's going to start getting him and Bijan Robinson on the field at the same time, start motioning guys around. Look out. They've rushed for 264 yards today. Robinson again squeaks through a hole to 20, down to about the 13. Think about this. Texas Tech was giving up 57 yards per game coming into today on the ground. They've given up almost 300 today, just on the ground, and about 600 in total offense been the story of this game for me we could talk about quarterback play all the embarrassment of riches at running back but we've seen from Xavier Worthy but the story of this game is what Texas has been able to do up front against a good attacking and aggressive Texas Tech front seven Hudson card and at quarterback Thompson being done for the day and card will keep it at the five gets drilled at the one It'll be first and goal, big hit by Eric Monroe, but Texas about to get to the 70 point mark. Hudson Card, again, athletic. You see Krishan Merriweather come inside. It's a good read by Card. Takes a big blow inside the two yard line. Nice pickup. So, first and goal. Robinson is into the end zone for a second touchdown of the season. One point away from 70. The last time Texas scored 70 was the year they won the national championship 2005 against Colorado. Robinson might be shaken up there also. After the score Dicker puts it through 70 to 28 Texas. Hosting West Virginia Spencer Rattler against Jared Dagey. That's on ABC at 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific time. West Virginia has not won in Norman since Ronald Reagan was in the White House. I think that was even before Dusty was born, 1982. It was before I was born. What are you doing your homework on me? Jeez. By the way, West Virginia, the only team they have not beaten since they've gone to the Big 12, Oklahoma. A huge win. They can get it done by Neil Brown. Texas Tech plays West Virginia next week in Morgantown. Texas will be at TCU, which is losing right now to SMU. It's going to be a fair catch. So while we have this opportunity, let's check in with Kevin Nagandi in the studio.
Kevin, when you're reading that, you got to speak up. I could hear Gus screaming and yelling. Gus Johnson, our guy, screaming and yelling at the top of his lungs on that Notre Dame touchdown. Notre Dame plays Cincinnati next week Big game. in South Bend. If they can knock off Wisconsin, could set up uh, two top ten teams in South Bend next week. And that marquee win that the Cincinnati Bearcats coming from the group of five would need moving forward. All right for Cincinnati to even open the eyes of anybody on that committee to seriously consider them even with an unbeaten season that they need teams like Notre Dame to get some help. Uh, of future opponents by getting big wins here in September. Xavier White stop at 28 yard line third down coming up. Texas has been really good leveraging the football defenders where they need to be forcing ball carriers back to their help. He quit Kowski. I mean he is renowned around college football for his scheming and really we're starting to see the fundamentals start to take place for this Texas defense. Here's your formation Dusty. Yes, sir. I mean look at that. It looks like they're on offense Texas with three guys lined up the triple I behind each other. Columbia on the run throws complete and they will spot him short of the first down for progress to the 34 tech will go for it. And you guys said you had never seen that before. I have not seen that as far as the defensive line line up in line like that opposite the center and obviously it's just so it makes it tougher on the offensive line to sort things out. We saw it work to perfection earlier with the Alfred Collins sack well done by the tech offensive line blocking that up and Columbia as he moves to his right finds his open target. Fourth down and one Thompson is the running back with Columbia in for the injured Tyler Shuck. Thompson got it. Thirty six yard line. That's Dusty it's interesting you talk about Texas leveraging the football because I asked Pete Kukowski this week I kind of felt like Texas was tackling well on the perimeter so far this year but not necessarily inside and he was having none of it. He was not happy with his football team in any way tackling on defense and today I think they've really shown improvement. Totally agree high standard for coach Kukowski and what he expects from his defense. First down of the Texas Tech 36. Thompson busting it to the outside. Flag down though. Finally blow it dead at the 41. Holding offense number 77. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Remains first down. Hey fans, make sure you head to at ESPN CFB on social now to vote for your favorite college town in the football town showdown presented by Shell. We're in one of the great football towns, Austin. The great venues in all college football, too, in TKR. A packed house, a packed city. A lot of excitement. And that will ascend with this impressive win today. Columbia dumping it off. Catch made at the 32 yard line by Rigdon. And guess what's going to happen this week now, guys? Is Texas back? Now that's all anybody's going to be talking about. And I, I think it's the single greatest poison for this Texas program because the one thing that Nick Saban and Alabama have done better than anybody is deal with success. And I think that is Sark's greatest job here that's what he's got to do with this Texas program so you would say it's rat poison then right it could be rat poison Just poison yes. but rat poison yeah Sark heard that last year Fungi on the catch of the 40 yard line do, do you really guys think though that you know the way they played week two that people will think they're back just by this performance I think it'll be more performances similar to this stacked up you know right after one another um, but yes, if they continue to play this way, that, well, right. that, that's going to be the conversation. But off this one performance, right. I don't think it goes there just yet. Listen, oh. they've had a TCU problem. They're going to have to handle and deal with TCU, I think, before that chatter really begins. Go ahead, Lugs. If you want to jump in here after this, so I know you still have something to say. Good throw there. It's caught. First down as you come up with the catch. 
I'm just saying we've seen it before. Yeah. You know, the hyperbole starts, and all, all of a sudden you get so excited, you get amped up. They've got two back-to-back -back weeks where they scored over 40 points in the first half of both games. This was an impressive uh, performance, and, and it makes you wonder, and can the team handle people patting them on the back? Columbia throws underneath to White, wrapped up after a gain of about four. The biggest key to that to me, Tom, it's the preparation. Yeah. Right? It's the demeanor that these guys will have in the meeting rooms, on the practice field. And that's one thing that Sark has taken and learned from the master, Nick Saban. How to never feel like you've arrived, how to never be satisfied and continue, regardless of how you play one week, put that to the side and continue to try to strive and work to get better. That will be the real key for Steve Sarkeesian. And he learned from the master the absolute best. Jet sweep on second down to Price. Able to stay in bounds and pick up the first down. This little job piece of running, breaking some tackles by Price, tiptoeing on the far sideline, moving the chains, picking up a first down. Injury timeout, Texas player shaken up with 8.45 to go in the game. Josh Thompson, who had an interception return for a touchdown in the first half. Is injured right now. PC is presented by Arby's. We have the means. For the first time, Texas won the Learfield IMG College Director's Cup based on each institution's finish in NCAA championships. Texas had finished second three times prior. Longhorn's going to win this game up 70 and 28. 8.45 to play. Impressive showing by Casey Thompson, the Longhorn quarterback, in his second career starts. Played a bunch of football. Sam Ellinger's backup came in in the Alamo Bowl last year. Had four touchdown passes in that game. Made his first career start in place of Hudson Card, who was benched last week against Rice. Thompson played well in that game. Played even better today, counting for six touchdowns. Columbia throwing it into the end zone, overshot it. Incomplete. You see Columbia hit on several deep shots earlier in this ball game. Down the field to top targets in the Big 12. Just too high, no chance for his player to make a play on the football. Henry Columbia stepped in though and done well. And I think real questions kind of concerning Tyler Shuck's health. Right. Could we see Henry Columbia for the foreseeable future? And they do have two freshmen, one in particular they love, and Baron Morton, one of the highest rated recruits they've ever had at that position, including when they had Patrick Mahomes, as Columbia is absolutely leveled. Hit first by Chris Adamora. Here is what Dusty's talking about. The injury to Tyler Shuck. It happened, it appeared, on this touchdown run. Watch as he lands on his left shoulder. This made it 14-70, threw an interception for a touchdown a couple plays later, and then went to the locker room. Working on that shoulder, collarbone area, you have no idea, and you hate to speculate exactly what that could potentially be. You hope Tyler Shuck's able to get healthy and able to get back with this football team as soon as possible. And Donovan, see a new quarterback. Yeah, Donovan Smith, again, was watching the Shuck uh, replay, couldn't see it. Maybe Columbia lost his helmet, and that's why Smith is in the game. Redshirt freshman from Las Vegas, he's just going to keep it on third and 19. Down to the 40 yard line. So it looked like maybe they just had him in there just to run the ball. Now Columbia comes back in, but we'll know more post game what the issue is with Shuck and how long he might be out. I know you felt that he was the best, at least potentially the best guy since Mahomes at Texas Tech. That, based off what I've seen so far, and you look at what he was able to do at Oregon and the three games he put on tape, thought in the opener against Houston and really against FIU, made some good throws, especially on the deep ball. With his athleticism, I did anticipate the best quarterback since Patrick Mahomes. Columbia on fourth down and 14, steps up in the pocket and was looking to run, then throws on the run, and it's caught. What a pass. Rigdon with a catch at the two-yard line. 
excellent body control and concentration on the sidelines by Rigdon. Another outstanding throw by Henry Columbi. Look at him drag that left foot. Gets that foot in as he catches the football and gets out of bounds. Columbi's a scrapper, man. We saw that last year in his four starts and has really stepped in today. Played some good ball. First down and goal. White hit at the one and picked up and body slammed. And here comes a flag. The fiery Brendan Schooler, 24 year old, transfer from two different schools in the Pac 12, Oregon and Arizona. Former wide receiver. Five years a wide receiver, a really good one in college, too. Now turned safety. You see the mean streak. After the play was ruled dead, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 14 of the defense. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal with an automatic first down. That is number 14's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. The crowd doesn't like it, but Dave, our fourth game together, we've seen this in two other of our games. When it's a full-blown body slam, picking somebody up and slamming them, they're going to call it every single time. Yep. Whistle blows. Play is over. Unnecessary. Donovan Smith back in the game at quarterback here. And he'll keep it. And he's into the end zone for the Texas Tech touchdown. First score for the freshman Donovan Smith. We got rave reviews from Matt Wells about his young quarterbacks, Donovan Smith being one of them. You see the size at 6'5", 230, the mobility. This little quarterback sweep lets a Roger Thompson lead the way as he walks into the end zone. Between him and the true freshman Morton, got some high upside with these two young quarterbacks. Garibay on for the extra point. And it's 71 35 with 640 to go here in the fourth quarter. Stevie Ray Vaughn. Austin Texas Longhorns up big. Bunch of really good games. Rutgers unbeaten. Michigan might be for real. Clemson at NC State. Could Clemson suffer its second loss of the season? Florida, Tennessee tonight, ESPN. West Virginia, Oklahoma, ABC Prime. Arizona at number three. Oregon at 12 after dark. Trey Wolf will kick it deep for Texas Tech with the Longhorns up 70 to 35. It'll come out to the 25 here for UT. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge standing by with Michigan Rutgers and the run game for the Wolverines. Big reason why they look for real. Maybe the team to beat in the Big Ten. Am I going too far with Too that? early to tell. Okay. But what a start to the season for Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines. They've been bludgeoning people in the run game. And the other side of the football, the defensive side, has made huge improvements. They moved on from Don Brown. They went and got a young coach and McDonald from from Jim's brother's team in Baltimore, the new young defensive coordinator infused some energy, and that defense has really stepped up. True freshman Jonathan Brooks, who's got nine carries this season, is in at running back. Hudson Card getting another series at quarterback for Texas and a penalty flag. Delay a game. Delay a huh? game. Offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. So Texas one point away from tying the most points they've ever scored in a Big 12 game. And this is Steve Sarkeesian's first Big 12 game. Statement. Here's Brooks. And he keeps going and has a first down. 35 yard line gain of 10. Another nice physical piece of running there by the true freshman Jonathan Brooks. Really been the story of this game. The Longhorns now go over 300 yards on the ground today. It was intentional a week ago against Rice. Sark told us we're going to be a physical football team. We're going to be a team that can run the football. It's what every all the other pieces of this offense are predicated based off the run. 
And they've stuck by that here once again today. Over 600 yards, you see Sark seeing the play clock, trying to get Texas to hurry up so they don't have to burn a timeout. They just get the playoff. And up to the 38 yard line is Brooks. Let's check in with Kevin Agandi in the studio. Would it be amazing if, if somehow Rutgers won that game Greg Schiano in his second stint there with the Scarlet Knights wouldn't be amazing for Harbaugh. That's great. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Good patience by Brooks and has a first down clock will stop to reset the chains but Texas taking time off the play clock to they're going to make another substitution here quarterback they're bringing in true freshman Charles Wright to replace Hudson card now. Wright is also from Austin. So they're just trying to get him some game reps. Look at these running backs that they've played. All are very, very gifted. And it, you know, it's, it's tough to imagine that Steve Sarkeesian, in all of his years as a coordinator or head coach, has never coached an offense without a thousand yard rusher. That's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. But it goes back to what this offense is built around, yep. right, Tom? Yep. The no ability doubt. to win the line of scrimmage and run the football, and it opens up so many things. For this Sark offense. That was Jonathan Brooks into Texas Tech territory. Well, look, give Sark credit too for making the tough decision early on to go after going with Hudson Card to go back to Casey Thompson. No question. And again, that was something he said he had to reevaluate, he had to reassess. Said he actually went back and watched the Alamo Bowl game over again and it's just every time Casey Thompson would enter the game the offense would move and points would be put on the board and we've seen that on display here today the other aspect is he even told us he wants to continue to get Hudson card looks he wants to keep him engaged Brooks picking up the first down out of the 35 yard line told us that he learned that from Nick Saban he said he thought Saban did a great job when it was two and Jalen Jalen and Tua finding spots and finding ways to keep that backup quarterback involved because you know this this staff still very high on the youngster Hudson Card. Well, think about when you're going to need them. Look at the national championship game yeah. with Jalen Hurts and, and Tua. I mean it's it's smart and I, and I think Hudson Card is mature enough and smart smart enough to see the big picture here. Well you think about too, whether it's Brian Dable Lane Kiffin Steve Sarkeesian now Bill O'Brien going to Oklahoma to be the guy in charge of the offense for Nick Saban knowing that you got a great chance to win a national championship. It's not just that these guys are getting opportunities to be a head coach again. It's what they're learning from being with Nick Saban because I remember when Lane was there I mean his personality was totally different from Nick Saban. So he saw it from a different point of view and Sark's personality is very different from Nick Saban. But so you get to see it as a guy who's been a head coach with a different set of glasses. There's no question and I think Coach Sark would be the first to tell you I'm not Nick. I'm not trying to be I'm trying to be me. But the the value that you get from seeing how it's done seeing the process and the way in which Nick Saban goes about his business each and every day it just really adds quality tools to your tool, tool belt as you get this opportunity to place like Texas. Brooks tackled at the 33 third down coming up Texas is trying to run the clock out here. They get a first down they'll probably just take a knee a couple times and end this game. Three and one will be the best start for a new head coach at Texas for an Acker 77. So Longhorns will get to three and one. And when they play TCU next week, a lot of people will be talking about what Casey Thompson did today. Six touchdowns responsible for five through the air and one rushing. I was just impressed. Had a chance to talk with him twice earlier this week. The maturity, the team first attitude. And you look back. At whether it was sitting behind Sam Ellinger a year ago or this year a freshman of Hudson Carr wins the job he didn't waver he didn't leave right. how many quarterbacks Tom in that spot up hit the transfer portal and go somewhere else instead of stick it out and wait for their opportunity to present itself it's fight or flight and most people got wheels up you know I mean he, he is 
He's one of those kids that again just persevered. He believed in himself, the team, the program. And I honestly believe, I think he knew, he knew he was still going to play. Right. That's where Sark handled it well. Because he brought them both in and told them exactly what was going to happen. Then the proof was in the pudding when it did happen. So now there's a trust between quarterback and coach. Fourth down and nine. Texas just keeps it on the ground here. And they won't get the first down. So Texas Tech will have the ball with 48 seconds left when we come back. Here on ABC. Don't forget Oklahoma, West Virginia tonight. Primetime game. Spencer Rattler has not looked like the Heisman Trophy favorite that. He was billed coming into the season. Still pretty good, but the expectations were through the roof. Here's a big run by Townsend into Texas territory. We'll stop the clock to move the chains. We'll see if uh, Texas Tech runs another play here. Feels like we might see Oklahoma flex a little bit on who they might be coming up in Big 12 play. Big opportunity, big moment against a good West Virginia team tonight. And I know it's only one game, and I'm not trying to start the hype train, Tom, so don't get on me too hard. <laughs> but this was in his first Big 12 outing. Steve Sarkeesian had this football team ready to play, to execute on both sides of the ball, and he could not have had a better start to his tenure here in the Big 12. I just, I, as impressive a performance as I've seen in Big 12 play from a Texas team in quite some time. Statement win today. For Steve Sarkeesian at Texas Longhorns. Final score from Austin. It's a blowout. 70 to 35. Texas for the first time since 2005 puts up 70. Steve Sarkeesian wins his Big 12 opener. See him uh, talking to uh, Darius Townsend, who's a transfer from Alabama. That's where Sark was before he came to uh, Austin. Casey Thompson had an incredible day. More on that in a second. Tom is with Sark. Well, Coach, you said all gas, no breaks, right? You want to finish the football game. Defensively, some things to correct in the back end, but offensively, you got to be awfully pleased. Yeah, we lost our mental intensity in the fourth quarter late in the game on defense, and, you know, we're going to need that. We're going to play teams that are going to score, and we got to hold our mental intensity and go finish football games. Got to play a lot of kids today. How much will that help you as a football program? Two, three, five weeks from now. Well, it's big. You know, we're still growing as a program, and there's still new schemes and things. We're going through it. But I was proud of the intent the guys prepared with. It showed up early in the game. I thought offensively we controlled the line of scrimmage, ran the ball well. How would you assess the offensive line? I know it's got to be an exciting day. That was a big day. This is two weeks in a row now. We've performed at the at the level that I think we're capable of. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, Tom. All right, Luke. 639 yards of offense for Texas. 336 on the ground as the Longhorns go to three and one. 1 0 in Big 12 play. They'll head to TCU. That's a, a game that will be on ABC next week, noon Eastern, 11 Central. Then they play Oklahoma the following week. And that's when we'll really know whether Texas has uh, improved in 2021. And look, TCU has been a thorn in the side of the Longhorns since they've come to the Big 12. Uh, you know, they've really had a lot of success here in the last nine times they've played each other. So that'll be a stepping stone as TCU lost to SMU today. But you're exactly right. I think most Texas teams are measured on how they do in Dallas against Oklahoma. How about Casey Thompson? Accounted for six touchdowns in his second career start. This was on fourth down, that touchdown pass to B. John Robinson in the opening possession. He was outstanding. Accurate with the football poise in the pocket. Went through his progressions. Even saw some of that mobility, though he didn't have to use it very much. Outstanding day for Casey Thompson. For Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville, this is Dave Pash saying so long from Austin, where Texas rolls over Texas Tech. Rutgers and Michigan is coming up after these messages.